Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson, and today I'm going to be looking at a little game called Four Sky. Now, I have not played very many of these Button Chai games before. The ones I have tried I've really enjoyed, but they tended to be solo. Uh, Button Chai makes these small games, 18 cards usually, in this kind of uh, wallet bifold container. Now, I've always found it intriguing when you design a game with such restrictions, and this one is no different. It's a 2-4 to four player game with only 18 cards and extremely short rules. I'm not exactly sure what the rule is in this one. It only talks about kind of birds flying in the sky, so I guess that's the theme. Now the main hook for this game is that each card in your hand has a scoring rule on it, and the players are going to be creating two different forests. Those are two sets of three cards on the table that all players will share. At the end of the game, you're going to score the three cards in your hand using one of those three card forests. Now the gameplay is manipulating the forest cards and trying to make sure that you're optimizing the scoring cards in your hand, so at the end of the game, you're going to be scoring the most points. So will this little game fly high, or will it just crash and burn? Let's go to the table, see how it's played, then we'll come back for my final thoughts on Forest Sky. This is Four Sky set up for three players. Shuffle the 18 cards and deal three cards to each player. Place the rest of the cards in the draw pile in the middle of the table. Leave room for three face-up cards on each side of the draw deck. These are called the forests. Now since this is a card game, let's have a quick look at the cards themselves. There are only 18 cards in the deck, made up of eagles, owls, hawks, and crows with different amounts of each. Each card will have its type, the range of values for the cards of this type, and the actual value of this card is highlighted. There's also the scoring effect in the top right of the card, and if there's a symbol, that means there are limitations on it. The talons and feathers mean you can only score one scoring rule of each type per player. The talons are for pairs and triplets, and the feathers are for straights. Let's get back to the gameplay. On a player's turn, they will do one of three actions. They will always start with three cards in their hand, and they'll always end their turn with three cards in their hand. The first action you can do is draw a card from the draw deck, or the top card of the discard deck, into your hand. Out of the four cards in your hand, you must now play one of them into the forest, or discard it. To play a card into the forest, there must be room. Each forest is limited to three cards. If both forests have three cards, then you must discard the card. You must, if there is room, play a card to one of the forests. The second action is to swap a card from your hand with an unlocked card in the forest. And the last action you can choose from is lock a card. You'll rotate a card in one of the forests 90 degrees. This card is now locked and will stay that way until the end of the game. No one can touch this card. The game ends when 5 out of the 6 forest cards have been locked, then we proceed to scoring. Each player will score points from the 3 cards in their hand using a total of 6 cards. 3 from their hand, and 3 from one of the forests. You cannot pick certain cards from different forests. You pick one forest and use those 3 cards in addition to the 3 cards in your hand. The scoring on the forest cards is not used. You are only scoring the 3 scoring rules from the 3 cards in your hand, remembering of course the feather and talon limitations. And the player with the highest score wins. That's how you play. Let's get back to see what I thought about Forest Sky. So, theme and components. There is no real theme in this one. Even this rule book here doesn't say anything really beyond you're trying to rule the sky. The components are decent and the card quality is pretty good. I do like the small form factor of this game. The rules are reasonably straightforward and very brief as you can see. You know, that's your entire rule set here. So on to the gameplay. As you saw from the overview, this is a very simple game, but in the simplicity, sometimes you do have a good decision space on each turn. That being said though, the decision space quickly shrinks and you can be left near the end of the game with really nothing to do on your turn. Now, I felt this game really works best as a two-player game. You get a chance to customize the cards in your hand along with the ones in the forest, so each turn you're kind of working towards your, your goal, which is gonna be maximizing the point cards in your hand. In a four-player game, I found the game definitely less enjoyable. Your ability to manipulate your scoring opportunities greatly diminishes. Because there's only ever 18 cards in the deck. It doesn't matter how many people are playing, it's always the same 18 cards. In a four player game, 12 of those 18 cards are dealt out. So it literally goes around the table one or two more times before there are no cards left to draw and the forest is full. So you're just left trying to manipulate your scoring cards by swapping in and out of the forests. You have a lot less ability to score some cards. You need all six cards to be Odd, well, good luck in a four player game. With two players, it's doable. With four players, it really comes down to the luck of the draw if you can do it. I found in a four player game, the balance of the points cards also didn't feel balanced. These cards here that give you the uh, points based on the value of another sky card in your hand are ridiculously overpowered. They are guaranteed points. No one can touch these points in your hand. 
I've played some four player games where some players got zero points, myself included, because we couldn't stop other people from altering you know, one of the four that we were going to be relying on to score our cards. I recognize that's a game, but it almost felt you could deal me three cards and around me deal six cards in the forest and I just score that way. I'm not actually playing at manipulating those cards because I'm not sure what that actually will do in a four player game. It just seems to be kind of random if at the end of the game you just whether you can score the point cards in your in your hand or not. Now, two players, I found it much more enjoyable. I was able to try and get the force into the way I needed it. It may not be ideal, but I was always scoring points in a two-player game. I also felt that after a game or two, I kind of had seen everything this game had to offer. I know this is a small, light game, but it kind of left me wanting more. I felt like this was an introductory set of cards that you play as part of a larger game. But unfortunately, there's no other larger game to move on to from this. So would I recommend this game? Ultimately not. I just found that I was either left frustrated by the four player game or I was wanting more at a two player game. I did like how small and easy the game is to carry uh, with you. For that, I'll give it very high marks. You can take this game just about anywhere you want to go and play it at any time. It was also short, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. The rules are short and the scoring rules are pretty easy to understand and uncomplicated. The hand management mechanism is an enjoyable one and the game does play reasonably well at two. Unfortunately, I was not fond of the higher player accounts. The games ended up being more random and I felt like I had little control over my scoring. There seemed to be some cards that were clearly better than others at higher player accounts. I also wanted, to me, more than just an introductory set of cards, because again, this felt like I wanted to move on to something else after I played this. And unfortunately for this, there's nothing else to move on to with this set. Overall, I'm going to give this game a 6 out of 10. At two players, I found it enjoyable a few times, but soon it wore off as I wanted to see more cards in the deck. At a higher player count, I just didn't enjoy the gameplay enough. It felt too rushed and too random, and I felt I only had a few turns before the game was done. This is definitely not a bad game, and I would say it's worth a try. Just do it at two players. I think you'll have the best experience that way. And that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.